Hey, what's up, guys? We are back at it here with the Harley Davidson project. Uh, I was able to make enough room in my workspace here to wheel it in, and get some parts thrown back on. As you can see, it's uh, it's pretty cramped in here right now. I got uh, three full size bikes in the basement, so uh, it's enough room to just throw some parts on. I think, and the plan here is to get uh, get all this stuff on and get it fired up again and determine if we have to do anything with the main seal on the motor because uh if you remember from the last video it was smoking horribly <laughs> wouldn't stay running and um it was just dripping oil all over the place right out of the exhaust. So could be the main seal still, but hopefully it was just something as simple as a plugged exhaust. So we're going to find that out uh, after we get all this back on. My buddy was able to find a seat pan to replace this rusty mess of a seat and seat cover. All that stuff all in one, one piece here. Nice, very nice and uh, tidy looking compared to that. He had somebody um, professionally reupholster that, which they did a heck of a job. Got the tank sealed up on the inside with uh, poor 15. And we got uh, some other odds and ends here. We got a fuel petcock to put on. Uh, these are the springs for the exhaust. And it looks like it's genuine Harley parts that you can still find quite easily. Still surprises me how easy you can find parts for these things. So we got uh, the rubber grommets for here uh, in the bag here as well. So I'm going to throw all that back on and we're going to get this bad boy fired up again and hopefully get it on the road. I can ride it a little bit and uh, see if it shifts through the gears all right because I still haven't have had the chance to uh, actually ride it and shift through the gears. So, so hopefully uh, this all goes smoothly and we'll be on the road soon. So let's get at it. All right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm getting rid of this ratty seat. Just changing this up alone, I think it's going to make this bike look 10 times better, even with the way everything else looks, just by getting this seat out of here. So I'm going to try to remove it off of the bracket here first and then take the uh, pin out where it, where it swivels here and just put the new one on with the new pin and everything. So I'm assuming this stuff's probably going to snap off right here on the old seat because it's just rusted really bad. But I'm going to try it. I already PB blasted it. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. So that part's not going to be used anyway. So I'm just going to get that out of the way. That'll let me hit this pin a little easier. This one bolt was already snapped off in there. Just... So I got the little C-clip off on the one side here, uh, on this end here. I'm going to try to tap this out. Just push it out this way and uh, get this whole bracket off of here since it's going to be on the new seat anyway. I'll try to get that other C-clip off and maybe go this way with it. That pin is probably just rusted together with the uh, frame. So I'm going to have to beat on that a little more. It's moving. So this bolt seems to be working okay. Just kind of, just big enough to fit through there to push that pin out. It's really rusted in there. Sheesh. 
finally got that thing out. Kind of reminded me of a rusted swing arm bolt trying to get it out. It's just as fun. All right, I got the new seat. Gonna line it up here with the mounting bracket. Get the new pin in there. You see the new pin is in much better shape. I got some anti-seize on there. Just gotta put the C clip on and we are good to go. Much better looking already. Just look at that. Next up, put the uh, fuel petcock back on so I can get this tank installed and get some fuel to this thing. And you can't forget the little rubber bumpers that the tank mounts to on the frame. Flip the exhaust back on. All right, so we got the exhaust on, fuel tanks on. We're ready to go to add some fuel. Just going to drain the oil one more time before we do that. Yeah, it's looking like we definitely still have some water in the crankcase. You can see here, too. Take a few flushes, I'm sure. I'm just gonna check the level here. I think we should be good though. Yep, we're good to go. Turning my attention back up top to the gauge cluster. Got these nice rubber grommets that are gonna sit on top of here, so I'm gonna install those next. And these just kind of slip into these little grooves right here. Put the gauge down, I don't wanna drop that. So I'm going to have to get the lights eventually too, uh, once I get the wiring figured out, but the uh, one of the light bulbs is going to slip up through here. But for now, I'm just going to set this on here and get the uh, 
brand new cable hooked up, spin the wheel just to make sure that all works. And again, I'll come back later and fasten these up with the uh, washers and the cotter pins that go underneath here. But for now, I'm gonna spin this wheel, make sure this gauge actually works. It's probably gonna be hard to tell, but I'm gonna spin the front wheel up by hand just to see if I uh, get any movement out of the gauge here. Oh yeah, we're good to go. Do the same thing for the tachometer side. So here's a look at the gauge cluster, got that installed. So we determine the uh, speedo works. Just gonna have to wait and see when the engine's running if the uh, tack works. It's about time to get this thing started. I got my 50 to one premix mixed up, ready to dump in there, and I got a battery hooked up. So hopefully we get some lights when I, when I fire this thing up and uh, we'll see what happens. So this is also the first time putting fuel in this tank since it's been resealed and it's got a new fuel petcock on it and stuff. I just want to make sure nothing's leaking. So far so good. I'm going to turn this on. Let's see if we can see anything coming out of the carburetor. I think we're okay though. All right, I'm going to get this outside. All right, we are ready for the first start attempt after getting the exhaust unplugged and um, putting a battery on it and the fuel tank sealed up and on there too. So um, it's in pretty much full running condition right now, aside from the uh, oil pump that's disconnected because I have some premix in there right now. But uh, I'm gonna get this thing started up, let it idle, get hot, and uh, we'll see how bad she smokes. Hopefully it's not as bad as before. I found a plug.
smoking pretty bad still. Tachometer works. still and oiling up pretty good so I'm thinking a main seal is gonna be needed unfortunately I mean oil is just pouring out of that exhaust still and I can kind of tell the the uh, spark plug is getting fouled out from the excess oil getting in there it's at least idled though didn't do that before I don't know maybe I should let it run a little longer Alright, so I let this thing run for a good 15 minutes. Uh, me getting on the gas, trying to open it up, getting some more heat to it. And it's still just spitting out oil all over the place. I got rags down. So, I mean, it's puddles of oil coming out of here. So, kind of what we suspected at first was the main seal. It's probably going to need to be done. At least it idles though, right? It sounds pretty healthy too. Look at all that oil coming out of there. I can kind of tell the uh, plug files out after a while, unless you're on the gas constantly. So if it idles for a while and you kind of wick the throttle, it files out real quick and then you uh, end up having to kick it over and over, clean the plug. It'll fire back up and then just spew oil all over and then eventually file out again. So I let this thing run for another good 25 minutes trying to get it to uh, clean out. It's still spewing oil all over. So I think I'm going to uh, drain the oil again and put it right into the uh, measuring cup that I used to put the oil in so I can see if it's using up oil. That'll tell me for sure if it's the crank seal on it. So uh, I'm going to give that a try. I'm draining oil now.
So when I filled this thing up, it was actually up towards the top. And I know we still got some draining in there, but it's looking like we'll be using a lot of oil. I'll let this drain completely before I come to that conclusion. So this is after draining for about 15, 20 minutes. I'm letting it sit just to make sure everything's out. I'm tilting the bike, putting it upright, trying to get every bit of oil out of there. And I'm like a half, half a quart low, it looks like. This takes, I think, just about a quart. Because I had this thing filled up to the top uh, when I filled it up. And uh, just running it, just idling it like that for, we'll say, 45 minutes total. I actually used up that much oil, so... I think that uh, pretty much confirms that it's a crank seal and unfortunately I made another discovery while I opened up the drain plug. This piece of metal was sticking out of the uh, drain hole and uh, I grabbed it with some pliers because it, it looks like it might be a part of a spring that's inside of there. I didn't get a chance to uh, run this thing through the gears, I don't even know if it will. but um, I don't know, anybody have any ideas what this might be off of in there? So I threw the shifter back on just to see if it would uh, run through the gears, just pushing it along. And uh, I think I found what that piece of metal was for. The shifter return spring for uh, the lever here. Whenever you push down, it just kind of stays down. If you go up, it stays up. It's supposed to kind of ratchet back. See? So my guess is that, because uh, that shaft kind of runs right along that, right near the drain plug. So I'm wondering if that thing snapped off in there and it just doesn't have the uh, spring anymore to return back. So after doing a little research, it looks like we won't have to split the cases to do that uh, shifter return spring after all. So uh, I let my friend know what's needed and he's ordering up some parts. So he's gonna get that return spring and um, also the main seals. So we're gonna do that. Hopefully after that, it'll all be good to go. And we can move on, get this thing closer to completion. So uh, I'm gonna save that for another video down the road. It's probably gonna uh, start on my next project in the, in the meantime, and then we'll get back to that once, uh, once the parts come in. So there will be a video on that down the road. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the alert bell so you're alerted whenever that does happen. And uh, stay tuned. And thanks for watching, guys. And we will see you in the next one.